I generally am of the opinion that if you keep things simple, life is simple. And so when I watch a video like I had this week, intellectually waxing on about distracting topics that could branch out endlessly, like is feminism and MGTOW part of a corporate agenda? I want you to keep something in mind, gentlemen, something quite simple and freeing around these procrastinating topics. And that is that even if it is a complex or interesting topic like this, so in this case, even if feminism or MGTOW were an orchestrated chess move by the system, my first response is, okay, so what? The important question to me is, how do you respond now? Okay, this will be a quick one. I've watched a few recent videos on this conspiratorial topic about things like social engineering related to corporate agendas and uh, MGTOW, feminism, etc. And I initially started making this a response video to those. But then I knew that far too many love that giddy drama of response videos and take them too personally, as though I'm attacking the creators, and I'm not. I'm trying to give my take on the topic. So in the hopes of avoiding drama, I'm keeping it about the topic solely and not about, and not the person talking about it, as it could be misconstrued. So this notion, for example, of MGTOW and feminism being corporate agendas, and where some even posit that MGTOW and feminism are the same thing by conflating the two because of their connection to a so-called corporate agenda, it's that willfully deceiving tactic of quick correlations without context that media and gynocentrism love doing that women love doing, you know. Two things appear similar on the surface, so they must be identical. Or two things are out of balance, like the wage gap, so they must be balanced. It's all quick soundbite misdirection that appears sensible until you're given time to consider them. Now, firstly, if the aforementioned argument means corporations are exploiting both men and women fiscally through MGTOW and feminism, through moving the social chess pieces around to have women at men's necks, then I'd agree. The machine is rubbing its hands and pockets at men and women separating away from each other in society. After all, the CIA did fund the feminist Miss magazine in the 60s. This was not an accident. It wasn't for equality. I can see the government's skill in this move. Brilliant strategy. Individuals are more controllable than groups, and instead of taxing one family, consisting of two to five or six people, where the man was the usual sole breadwinner, effectively you're taxing one person, you break the family up, and so now you can tax all of them. And their children too. I get it. Brilliant chess move, big brother. And as one of Hitler's famous speeches revealed, even before he came into power, he said, and I'm paraphrasing, get the women and you automatically get the men Focus on the women, and you also get the next generation of children. Women control the social game. This socio-psychology in politics is elementary to political think tanks. Focus solely on women, and you control the lot. But I disagree where it's proposed that feminism and MGTOW are synonymous, as though MGTOW is the male version of feminism. Men who go their own way in feminism are as different as apples and oranges. Let me clarify something again. Quite simply, feminism was the government dangling a carrot in front of women to hate and leave their men, and they did, quite easily in fact. Whereas men who go their own way, by comparison, are just reacting to this move by women and walking away in self-respect. That's it. Now, as to the notion of MGTOW and feminism are corporate agendas, well, yes and no. Feminism, the left, and gynocentrism is constantly breaking traditionalism apart, pushing women away from men so they can tax everybody, and the sexes have never felt more apart. Okay, I agree. But without even going down that forensic rabbit hole, the real point is going your own way as a man is the only rational choice in today's gynocentric minefield. Regardless of who laid the minefields or manufactured them or what brand they are, the point is... If even the smallest reassurance a man could take for himself in the past, i.e. a simple prenup, now means absolutely nothing, where there is no calculated risk left for a man, then who cares who arranged the furniture in this gynocentric mess? The point is, there is nowhere for men to sit anymore. There is no furniture for men. This is the crossroads a man faces, who's about to embark on a life direction. 
if you can't have a relatively stable, rewarding, prosperous, and ambitious life with wife and kids as a once more or less achievable goal of stability, even if he is virtuous and works honestly and is a stand-up guy, if he can't have some kind of stable foundation upon which to trust building his future life on, then he won't do it. No rational man will. It's very simple. Just as women have made it very clear they're not taking the tiniest risk with men, even if there is no risk, so they are doing life away from men and giving the middle finger to guys, you know. Women need men like fish need bicycles. All sex between men and women is rape, patriarchy, wage gap, mansplaining, rape culture. Etc, etc. It's like shaming propaganda toward men to fuck off. It's almost pathetic to even want women now. It's like begging a bully to be a best friend. Do we need it tattooed on our foreheads, gentlemen, that women don't love us anymore? How clear do women's actions and life choices have to be to you? When today women vote for and love immigrant men more than you. When they vote these men to come into the West, men whose beliefs and morals treat women like shit, where these are the men women irrationally have a soft spot for more than you. Loving these largely misogynistic foreign men while they hate their own men, I ask you, can it be any clearer? You know, many men going their own way get seductively caught in the weeds of theory, procrastination, ontology, data, facts, laws, studying the moves of the sexes. Where do you think MGTOW will be in five years? Really? That's all you've got? Or jerking off to the male victim porn of people's anecdotes? You know, did you hear how another man got shafted today? Another horrific story of male disposability, where predictably no one gave a shit about the guy? Yeah, okay, what are you going to do about it in your life? My salient point is this. This is the landscape for a man today. It is what it is. Women are the way they are today. What is a man to do, rationally speaking? What is his move? Traditionalism? (laughs) How much money do you sink into a worthless stock before you cut your losses and sell? How much do you have to lose at the gambling table before you walk away and at least have enough in your pocket to eat? If she is always handed a metaphorical gun in relationships with men intimately and now in business or any other way in our culture, then what are men naturally going to be inclined to do? As any living organism would that wants to survive. It goes in the direction of survival, that's what. Is this all an agenda? Feminism, MGTOW? It's interesting, intellectually, sure, but maybe it's just my mind because when the Titanic is sinking, I don't get angry or suspicious at the hows before I'm safe. Ooh, let me look at the ship's logs to see how we ran into that iceberg before I get on the lifeboats. Maybe later, maybe someday up ahead, after time has passed and the Titanic is growing barnacles on the ocean floor and I'm lying peacefully on a hammock sipping from a coconut. It might be an interesting pursuit later post-mortem, but my practical thoughts now are continually surviving this sinking ship, not in a desperate way, just in a common sense, practical way. But traditionalists are continuing to help the women and children onto lifeboats while knowing that these same women are causing this ship to continually sink, hoping a Nawalt will allow him on a lifeboat with her. And I'm not being a nihilist, I'm just wanting to get on with life, maturely and practically. You know, where life actually resides for a man today in his own direction, away from gynocentrism, because it's the best way to live today, in my opinion. It's the most self-respecting way to live as a man. But you do as you wish. Going my own way and doing my own thing, non-traditionally speaking, is just my very simple and uncomplicated sovereignty. I'm not fighting social politics. You can do that if you wish. I'm helping in my own modest way in these videos, okay? But I'm no sacrificial hero flying my lone X-wing into the empire. I'll live peacefully on my own island instead, thank you. And if sunshine seems to reside for you on a similar island of self-ownership, I'd encourage you to consider doing the same, gentlemen. And please don't give me the bullshit comeback of John Donne's quote, no man is an island. I hear that same notion from women in far less sophisticated ways, so save your breath. Besides, I'm more inclined to believe the saying should really be no woman is an island if you look at the data and statistics of depression and unhappiness today between the sexes. You don't need mirrors, gentlemen, to feel validated. You don't need a MGTOW rulebook, a decoder ring, or consensus to be happy. You just need contentment and self-esteem, and that isn't found out there being validated by women or others. 
and it's not found in interesting distractions like conspiracy theories. Your life is wasting away, plunging into political complexities. The answer is, what simple things will you do to make your life better now? Go your own way, gentlemen, and happy 2018. Later. Please share, like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon once you've subscribed to be notified of my next video. And feel free to donate too. It keeps me creating, and I really appreciate it. Cheers.